months of planning went into this 30 minutes of explosive activity. It's, it's like Christmas presents. It's like all the all the all this work that you put into putting getting the buying the presents, wrapping them all up, and then all of a sudden, 30 minutes later, every present under the tree has been unwrapped. Last week, the U.S. Army, Kuwait Army, and Kuwait Air Force conducted their first combined joint exercise in six years. Operation Lightning Eagle, as it was unofficially called, took place near Camp Fury, Kuwait, not far from the Iraqi border. Because it's armored warfare, the speed and tempo that you saw tonight and today, that's what we're after. Is I want a, a, a tank company to hit hard and fast, artillery support, uh, the Apaches that you saw flying in support. Bottom line is I should be able to quickly overwhelm because that's what this brigade is designed to do. The live fire involved both U.S. and Kuwaiti tanks, U.S. and Kuwaiti snipers, U.S. artillery and mortars. Go, go, go! As well as Kuwaiti Apache helicopters. The exercise consisted of both day and night runs. So th this is uh, actually a unique opportunity to um, show the uh, interoperability between U.S. and Kuwaiti forces. Um, it's a uh, a lot of work was put into uh, making sure that we can work together uh, during combined arms operations such as this, uh, make sure our communication systems work together, our command and control systems, uh, as well as just uh, our equipment, how do we, uh, how we talk and work together. So uh, doing an exercise like this allows us to, uh, to first uh, work out any of the kinks uh, between uh, our two forces as far as uh, getting our uh, forces to work together and then um, uh, allows us to kind of showcase uh, that ability as well. All the U.S. units were from the 3rd Armored Brigade Combat Team, 1st Armored Division. They are currently deployed to Kuwait as a regional stability force for U.S. Army Central Command, supporting allies in the Middle East. Part of that mission is conducting realistic exercises with regional partners to improve the ability to work together and improve capability. Everything that we're doing is exactly the kind of operations they would operate if they needed to execute the defense of Kuwait or anything for the Peninsula Shield Forces. A U.S.-led coalition assisted Kuwait after an Iraqi invasion of Kuwait in 1990. Since then, the countries have worked side by side on a number of efforts, including counterterrorism throughout the region. The training is important for the U.S. because many of the personnel haven't worked with the Kuwaitis at this level before. Um, I learned working with the Kuwaitis that they are similar to us, you know, they have our tanks, they uh, train similar to we do, they have their live fires, they, their movements, their movement drills are like, uh, like we do them, they all communicate to each other just like we do, it's, uh, it's not, not a lot of difference. I wanted a well-trained U.S. formation, I wanted a well-trained Kuwaiti formation at the end of the day, and use that as a springboard for us to expand our operations for uh, increasing that level of cooperation over the next uh, couple years as follow-on brigades continue to come to Kuwait. So while the exercise scenario only lasted 30 minutes, it evolves a more than two decades old relationship between U.S. and Kuwaiti forces. Chris Church, Stars and Stripes. One BMP destroyed, estimated two casualties. Over. Roger, I copy end of mission.